Former Attorney General in this government, Karen Gakua, is adamant elected leaders holding executive positions in government should step aside or step down if they are charged with any offence or their integrity comes into public scrutiny. He says that's the right thing to do. The member for Sina Sina Yongumur, once removed as a cabinet minister by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, who just recently resigned as a member of the National Alliance, a par coalition partner in this government, says anything less would demean the office they hold, however way they argue. I talked to Mr. Kua this afternoon. Mr. Kua, thank you very much for coming on to PNG tonight. My pleasure. Okay. Yeah. These issues are closer to you, I think, as a former Attorney General. We've had uh, some major high-profile arrests of certain big people in this country. Uh, and, sir, uh, give us an overview of, uh, of the arrest and of the kind of feeling, the situation out there right now. Yeah. Um, it's a broad question, I yeah, suppose. It, it's yeah. a very broad uh, question, but nevertheless, um, the, the thing that uh, tends to push, uh, push this, the profile of these issues up is because of the chairs that the individuals involved have been sitting on or are presently sitting upon. So if we are to conduct a rational discussion, you need to remove their chairs yes. and position them there in front of us just like any ordinary citizen. And then all this fuss will fade away. You will see them for what they are. You will see what the issues for what they are. And that will bring a lot of clarity. So you got to take the fact that there's a prime minister involved away. You right. got to you got to peel that away like a layer. Take that out. Then you got to remove uh, the, the title of the attorney general out of all of this. Yes. You got to remove the title of a judge out of all of this. You got to remove any other position that anybody who is involved sits on, you, you peel that away. Okay. Now, when you say peel it away, you remove those people holding it Take away. their titles away. Take their, Take titles, their titles away. away and stand them up as just mere citizens of this country. Only then will you immediately see clarity emerging. Okay. Emerging as to how we should as a country, uh, we should as, our, as an institution, we should as individual authorities sitting in responsibility positions, we should as leaders, we should as citizens be conducting our debate on these issues. Okay. So we have to peel all these titles, all these labels out and just sit them up there on a chair as just ordinary individuals, citizens of this country going through a law enforcement issue and then we will see clarity. Okay, one person has done that, I suppose it is uh, Bernard Sakura. Um, um, Okay, the case is pending. He, yeah. we, we, we won't get into it. Right. Um, but the mere fact that he did step aside to confront his case, was that the right thing? That is the right thing to do. He's done the right thing. And I hope that message is not lost to other people who are involved in the same scenario. They need to do the right thing. You know, if there's been an example lacking, then almost all of a sudden with the judge involved, we have a very, very clear-cut example, a resounding example in front of us to follow. So there can't be any confusion about what standard of behavior is expected from each of these individuals. So there's a big lesson there, and I would invite all of them to look at that uh, example and, and to take heed of it and follow it. Okay. And then there's the other one where, uh, again, um, uh, the uh, minister, Mr. Pala, he, uh, He's, he has said that he would, he would resign if found guilty, but still holding on to the position. Well, there are different standards required for different purposes, for different forums, different standards. So the standard he's talking about is the standard that uh, you need to uh, avo avail yourselves to when you're going through a criminal trial. And it's only limited to that situation. But that standard does not apply when you are standing up as a leader. Uh, when you are vested upon you, the Section 27 responsibilities under the Constitution, the Leadership Code, that says that you have to behave integrously. You cannot 
um, behave in any manner that questions the integrity of that office, diminishes it, uh, lowers the esteem and the standard in which the people in the society will hold that attached to that office. You can't subject that office to that kind of potential consequences. So unless a standard is required, it's all about a perception. Mm -hmm. So the standard that uh, the Attorney General requires is not a standard that is required. He's misapplying one standard for another occasion. That standard he's talking about has to be limited to the criminal trial. When he comes to it, he will insist upon and will be entitled to that standard sure. of proof. Okay. However, when he's sitting in an office and uh, he is, um, uh, the, the leadership code applies to him, a much lesser, lesser standard applies. The issue is one of perception. Would yes. an ordinary person out there in the community feel that the integrity of that office has been diminished? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he should, by, he by should any another degree. Word, by he any should, degree. in other words, uh, step aside. Step aside. Resign your portfolio as the Attorney General. That's the best thing that's required. He should have done that ages ago when he was charged with, uh, uh, on an allegation of attempting to pervert the course of justice. Yes, yes. Now, you have to remember that his job is to uphold, protect, and defend the course of law. His, his, his duty is not to obstruct and frustrate it and defeat it. Yes, yes. His job is the contrary. Yes. Now, as soon as you are accused of that, it means that you, you have abandoned your primary responsibilities yes, yes. in that chair, yes. in that and office. And the other thing, you are the chief advisor to government on wrongdoing. Correct. And you are now accused of a wrongdoing, of course, subject Correct. to being cleared in court or yes. confirmed in court. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you've got a, you've got a situation where you, we, we are at loss as uh, citizens here. Yeah, it's, it's all about whether you want to be a hypocrite or not to be a hypocrite, <laughs> speaking, speaking in layman's terms. You, uh, were so an, you were an attorney general before. Would you have resigned if this was you? I would. I, I would immediately. And <clears throat> you ask me, do you really mean it? Well, you would know until, unless it happens. Yes. However, you can look back at my past. Yes. At my past. Have I done so in similar situations? I have. Yes. You know, one instance in the past, I was uh, Deputy Chairman of Petromin Holdings. At that point in time, some governance issues cropped up. Uh, politics clashed with the, the Board of Directors of Petromin Holdings, who is now responsible for all the mineral uh, business interests of the state in this country. And when we were unable to resolve it properly based on law, I resigned my seat as the Deputy Chairman and I went out. And then more recently, I was the Attorney General. I could have easily sat back and allow issues of misgovernance uh, to, to continue. But I said, no, we cannot allow that. I said, uh, take for example, uh, the proposed amendment to Section 145 concerning the vote of no confidence on the floor of Parliament. Mm. That was to be further restricted and almost made redundant. And I said, we can't do that. We can't do that, you know. That will lead to the demise of democracy in Papua New Guinea. So I said, we cannot do this. And I wrote to the Prime Minister, I wrote to everybody, even though the Cabinet agreed, I still resisted it. And I said, we can't do that because I don't think everybody understands the, the implications of this. You new, lost your job on that. I lost my job on that. I said, we can't take up the UBS loan. Mm -hmm. I resisted that loan. And, and again, that's yeah. another reason why I lost my job. Yeah. So there were a number of things that I disagreed upon. And I stood by my thinking because I thought that was in the best of the interest of the country. All the while realizing that by doing so, yeah. I will be exposing myself to a termination. The question for me was, what matters more? Yes. The national interest or my private, small parochial interest? <laughs> Still proud of that decision. And I am. I am. I've stood by the people. I lost my uh, portfolio as uh, uh, Attorney General, but I still survive uh, to speak on this day. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. What matters is the people's interest. Yes. Yeah. You look at people in the eyes so, and talk so, to them. So if you ask me, would I resign, mm -hmm. hypothetically, if I was the Attorney General, over, if I was faced with all these criminal charges, yes, of course I would. As I've already demonstrated that I've, in similar situations before, I have resigned. Yes, yes. Or I have exposed myself to the firing line on matters that are important to this yes. country. Well, there's no doubt you are quite unique in that, uh, Mr. Kua. 
Let's look at PNG. There had been instances in the past where, where leaders should have basically resigned or stepped aside. And, and we know of one or two where uh, then Prime Minister Sir Julius stepped aside over Sandline. But apart from that, nothing else really happened, although there were some major cases. Yes. So there is a precedent, <clears throat> there is a pattern we followed all the way through until we come to a person like you, I suppose. Well, I, I, I wouldn't want to really put myself on a <laughs> pedestal up there and think of it that way, but uh, it's a duty that's vested in, its, in every individual leader. They can choose to protect and preserve their own turf uh, for the uh, purposes of perpetuating their own survival in that uh, office or um, enrich the people's wrath upon themselves because people will then finally make uh, judgment on themselves mm -hmm. or take risks, personal risks, do what is right for the people and let the people come forth later and reward them yeah. perhaps by returning them back to that office right. down the track. Right. So you can try to do, take an approach of self-preservation or that people can use their collective power to preserve you in office. These are two different pathways to the same outcome. And what approach you take is based upon your own personal convictions, the way you have been brought up, the way you've been raised, the way you've been influenced, mm -hmm. and the way you formulated your own car uh, character. All of that has a final outcome in, in the way you approach a particular question. You know, it's people's interest versus, versus your personal interest. Okay, okay. Uh, let's take Prime Minister today's case. Yeah. Um, and if you were the Attorney General, what kind of advice would you give him, uh, given the current situation the Prime Minister is going through? People are accusing him, but he's saying um, there is no credible evidence, there's no charges, but there is that, that cloud that's hanging out there. What kind of advice would you give to a, a Prime Minister if you were the uh, Attorney General? Yeah, uh, what the, the, the approach that he's taken so far is completely wrong. Um, it's not for him to uh, issue judgment on the allegations made against him. Whether he's innocent of those allegations or not is not a matter for him to uh, insist upon. Once an allegation is made he, as the Prime Minister, ought to submit to the proper process, okay. which is that of the criminal justice system. You leave it to a judge to make the decision yeah. about whether he's guilty or innocent. Yeah. So he, he, can't ha say, he hasn't been charged yet, though, is he? He has to submit to the process. Okay. He, he, that's an that's a important yeah. question, you yeah. see. He, he hasn't been charged yet, but he's being asked to go in for an interview. If he goes in for an interview, one of two things might happen. They might question him and find that there's nothing and uh, uh, they might then discharge him forthwith. The warrant is discharged, he's now free to go and operate. Okay. That's one of two things. The second one is that he might potentially be charged. But you don't know until you go through happens. the process. Yeah. But his and argument is that, you know, he'll bring the office of the Prime Minister into question and set a bad precedent or whatever precedent that might be for that office. Is that... Uh, an argument that uh, we need to really look at and discuss? In reality, the opposite is true. By not us responding to the warrant, okay. he's the, actually demean the office of the Prime Minister. So by resisting this process, he's actually diminished respect for his office more than if he were to submit to it. That's the honorable thing to do. As I said, mm. uh, the duties and responsibilities that he carries vested upon him under the leadership code is not to create a perception in the eyes of the people that he's diminished respect for that office. That's a far lesser standard. And uh, that's his duty. That is his other set of duties. In okay. addition to his other duties not to uh, commit a criminal offense, he's also burdened as a leader in public office the duty to respect the leadership code. Yes. Okay. So, so, so there, there, there you are. You see, by insisting upon not following a, a court order, the warrant, and the process of law enforcement, he's diminished uh, the integrity of, of the office of the Prime Minister far more than what he is saying now. Okay. All right. Well, um, there we are. We heard it from the former.
I guess, Attorney General, and we'll let Papua New Guineans to, uh, to take that in and, I guess, form their own conclusions.